so here we are again uh, back in the car so the audio I'm sure is not going to be so great but um, yeah I don't know and it might cut out um, just because I'm driving through like a zone that doesn't have a lot of coverage but you know sometimes when you're driving and I'm sure you can all relate to this especially late at night it's a great time to think um, you know they say that there's two things there's there's a few reasons why apparently scientifically why certain parts of the globe people live longer and there's a few reasons there's genes you know your genetic uh, makeup um, yeah and that has a lot to do with you know uh, folks and you know some regions they stay within their perspective blood line which means like I'm not talking about incest I'm talking <laughs> I'm talking about um you know shit man like I don't know I, uh people having strong DNA that has a lot to do with how how well you age um the way you treat your body, apparently two major factors are hydration, um, keeping your body hydrated, uh, apparently, because we're 70% water, and apparently that has a lot to do with aging uh, well, living a long life, and um, of course, genes is the number one thing, but, you know, I should have prepared this a little bit better, because I did just recently hear, you know, some facts about this, but one of the factors, like an outside factor that could possibly help is meditation because um, apparently it slows the, the process of aging, the stress on your body, and um, yeah, meditation. So I hate to say that driving is, is, a, is meditation because it's not. You're not, you know, you're paying attention to driving, but it really gives you a chance to think when you when you're driving alone you know for a long stretch and um, it's a good time for me anyway sometimes I want to talk and um, yeah I've been recognizing a lot of my a lot of my um, mistakes recently you know when you lose somebody when you're in your 30s and your partner, um, it's so, you know, you can't take advice, it's very hard to take advice from people who don't know what it's like to have gone through that loss, but there, I don't think there's anybody who's going to say uh, to you that, um, that you shouldn't be, uh, try to move on someday, like, I get this thing where people will say, you know, do you think you'll ever be able to find love? And if I say no, it's hard for them to accept. It feels like a definitive answer and a sad ending to a story. Um, but I'm also trying to just be honest in life. And, you know, it's only been, it hasn't been two years. It's, it's only been a year and some months and that can be a lot of, a long time or, or not a long time, you know, depending on how long you spent with the person, how long, you know, so many factors. <clears throat> but, yeah, I don't know. We know one thing for sure, I will never find another Rachel. And, shit, man, some people are, have a, have a, uh, the way they're made up thing about Rachel and I, it, it's just, I don't know, we were both so flawed, and I think that both of us, um, our flaws were not the same, but our flaws fit together like a puzzle piece, so I always felt like there was no one else for me, you know, it's such a you know, when you let somebody in, they know everything about you, like all, everything about your body, physically, they learn all of the things that when you spend time alone and, you, and there's things that, 
you know, it's just harder and harder to reveal those things, things about your, your brain, you know, she knew a lot about the way I think, um, and, and the things that drive me, and it's less about, so a lot of couples, they don't know much about the way the other person thinks, they know more about their partner's behaviors, reactions to things, or based on how you handle stress or the way you live your life, some people create their own uh, narrative or story for, they wrap a person up into a, a set of beliefs, like, if you talk to someone about their wife now, someone who's, you know, got a healthy relationship and is, has a wife or a husband, and you, and you ask them about that person, a lot of people will, will start to describe behaviors, will say, well, you know, um, you know, yeah, my wife, she loves crafts, she, you know, she, um, man, she can't get enough of these shows, and, you know, she doesn't like when I do this or that, or she tends to get mad, you know, or, oh, man, boy, does she, you know, she loves Christmas, or whatever it may be, um, or, like, oh, she's great at going out to eat, she, you know, tips well, whatever, but, um, I got a chance to really, when you, when you think you're going to lose someone, and then even after you've lost them, you start to, I start to really, I really started, I mean, it started earlier for me, because Rachel and I had broken up, and, during that time, I had, I, I wanted her back so bad, and so I, I had to, I took the time to analyze, I really went in deep, I, I thought, there were so many things, you know, it, it, we had been together maybe four, four or five years, something like that, and, you know, you break up for certain reasons, and we both had our, our side of the story, and, and I felt like I wasn't doing anything wrong, I felt like she man, I just felt, I was still a boy, I didn't know what it was, what it was to be in a relationship, be a man in a relationship, and to put that person first, um, and to think about your life in conjunction with theirs, and, uh, so I had to think about, I started to think, what are the, what are the ways that I failed, what did, what are the things, and I started to put myself in her shoes, and think about the things she said, and really go into it, and let go of, my end of the story, of let go of what I thought I was missing out on, or the, what I thought were the problems that, you know, I, I was fed up, or, you know, things that I thought were wrong, and I started to think about, all right, well, this is, you know, this is what the things she said to me, and the things she needs me to be, and I, once I started examining that, I started to see that she was right, and that in many ways I had not grown up. And I had, some people really need a strong, they want their person to be strong for them. They want their person to put their cares as a priority. And they want their person to grow with them. And Rachel needed that. She needed someone in her life that she thought cared about her above all else. And, and, and I realized that. So... I started to think about the way she thinks then. And when she got sick, I really had to start letting go of my own viewpoints. Don't get me wrong, we still argued. There were still things that... Um, it was a very stressful time in my life, so in both of our lives. So, of course, you know, we were both... It was a rough time, but I found ways to really get inside her head and start to adopt her preferences, her opinions, her viewpoints, her goals, her needs, her wants as my own. And so once I started doing that, she started to trust me to speak for her on her behalf in many ways. As her healthcare proxy or, you know, in general, I really got to, more than ever before, got to know inside of Rachel. The, the fundamental things that she needs 
to survive, the fundamental things that she needs to feel, to make her feel at, at peace. And of course, it, man, it just makes you very close with a person. And when you start trying to get in their head and thinking their way and letting go of your own ego, um, you know, two things can happen. You can either uh, start to examine the way that that person thinks and realize and, and discover that they're very much at odds with the way you think, or you can start to understand them and, and love them more. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what happened with Ray, Ray and I. And, and thinking back over, going over everything, uh, you know, I'm just blown away by the way she handled handled everything and uh so yeah when it but but now you know man when she died I said I'm gonna live the way she wanted me to live but it has been hard because I think I don't find much satisfaction in my job day to day so I find these ways to distract myself and I don't think I'm strong enough to be that, that what I was for her for anyone else right now, um, I've tried, I have tried dating, uh, I found someone, and, and, uh, you know, I always trust my instincts, but I've also, I've all, you know, I was lonely, I, I, it's lonely, so that can be blinding sometimes, and getting to know somebody over the phone or online if you meet them, man, it's a different thing, Rachel and I work together for, you know, a a couple of years before we ever started dating, so, uh, I got to know her face-to-face, analog, before all this app shit, and, um, it's very different, it's very different getting to know somebody first through a picture and a profile, it's just, man, you can get swept away, because you don't know what that person is, how they're augmenting their behavior, because when you meet in that sort of way, you meet under the foundation that your your reason for meeting is, um, yeah, your reason for meeting is, um, it's because you're both looking for someone else, so it's a different way of meeting than than it would be naturally uh, meeting someone in an environment that's not directly aimed at finding a life partner, so it's hard. I don't know, I just got home, I want to stop the podcast.